good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever we may be. Welcome to our webinar on exploring the drivers of uh, Buvora drivers in Atlimo advisory adoption in Nigeria. And thanks for joining. Yeah. So today in our agenda, um, a quick overview, we'll be looking at the findings from a recent research conducted by Bukhara um, Research Center. And then we will have an expert of panelists to discuss uh, the recommendations to learn from them, their field work, and then to see how best to develop strategies together and to integrate um, into field implementation. Then we have a session Q&A session where we will have our participants also bringing in their experience, um, also asking questions to our panelists and our presenter as well. And then there will be a closing remarks at the end of the day. We are looking in total of an hour for this webinar. Yeah, so with me today, we have myself being the moderator, I'm Theresa Ampadipuache. I'm coordinating the monitoring, evaluation, and learning impact assessment component of excellence in agronomy. Um, with me as panelists and presenters, we yes. have Samson Obuntoe, the General Secretary of um, Aklimo Association in Nigeria, and also a regional manager for Notori Chemical Industries. We have Beta Otis, who is a user experience and human centered expert working with Alliance. But I visited them. We have EMC, also the managing director of Sartre International, a processing, a cassava processing company as well. Then we have Shamali Kaisas, who is then going to be the presenter from Busari, presenting to us their find, findings. Then finally, we have Thompson Obunsami, a scaling specialist working with um, IETA through the Excellence in Agronomy Initiative. Um, next, we have, we, we need to look at a climo. Yeah, uh, Shamale is going to present findings, but certainly we want to know what it is. We don't want to assume here. So basically, it's a series of decision support tools uh, coming in different formats. We have digital, we have paper-based apps with, with lookup um, maps as well. That basically works with smallholder farmers and then extension agents. They give site-specific recommendations looking at fertilizer, looking at planting dates, looking at intercropping as well as scheduled planting. So this is basically what we are going to talk about today. And with this, I will quickly hand over to Shamali to take us through their findings for 15 to 20 minutes, after which we get into our panel discussions. Yeah. So over to you, Shamali. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Hi, everyone. Um, just uh, maybe some, some of you could give me a thumbs up if I'm audible and clear. Okay. My name is Shalmali Ghaisas, and I'm a senior associate at Busara. I am very excited that all of you could join our webinar today and listen to our recently concluded work on Akilimo. Um, for the next 15 to 20 minutes, I will present our overarching methodology, the key findings of our um, qualitative research focusing on what we prioritized as areas for interventions. And finally, the main learnings from having tested these interventions in a field lab setting with cassava farmers in Southern Nigeria. Um, I think as Teresa pointed out, we do have a question answer um, session at the end. There's also a question answer uh, option somewhere along the Zoom webinar. So uh, while I won't be able to reply to questions during the course of the presentation, feel free to start putting in questions into the Q&A and I would be happy to address them at the end. Um, a little bit about uh, who we are, what we do before we go on. Uh, at Busara, we are a research advisory and design firm that specializes in applying behavioral science across the global south. Essentially, we study why and how people behave the way they do, identifying the context-specific factors that drive their decisions and behaviors. And we then are able to use these insights to design and test solutions aimed at changing behaviors, leveraging the different factors that we have identified. Um, I will explain this process in more detail through the course of this presentation. Over the past year, with the support of Excellence in Agronomy and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, 
Bussara has conducted research with Akilimo as part of the digital grant. Akilimo is an agronomic advisory service developed for and with smallholder farmers. And Akilimo is disseminated via the support of multiple ground partners and their extension agents. Thus, we conducted our research with extension agents, lead farmers, and regular farmers to understand the enablers and barriers to the adoption and use of the advisory. We specifically focused on the cassava best planting practices and the fertilizer application guide. A little bit about our methodology. We conducted this research in three phases. So the diagnostic phase is like a qualitative deep dive with the stakeholders. We conducted in-depth interviews with extension agents and farmers to understand the model of accessing advisory services. Through this course, we learned about the trainings that extension agents impart to farmers. In the co-design phase, we conducted three workshops with extension agents and farmers to hear their ideas and inputs to addressing the barriers identified during the diagnostic phase. Based on this feedback from the extension agents and the farmers directly, we identified the areas of interventions. Finally, in the testing phase, we developed prototypes of the various intervention ideas and conducted a lab testing with lead farmers and regular farmers. Now let's take a look at some of the key enablers and barriers that we analyzed in our formative research. These are factors that encourage or inhibit the adoption and use of Akilimo. An easy approach to understanding the various enablers and barriers that farmers face in engaging and applying Akilimo is to understand it via a journey map, as you see in front of you. Amongst the enabling factors, we found that multiple sources of information within one's farming community and a general enthusiasm for learning something new owing to the trainings by extension agents is a strong enabler. We also learned in detail about the Akilimo operational model, which identifies strong performing, easily accessible farmers within the communities and assigns them the role and responsibility of being a lead farmer. This lead farmer is then the source of training and information for other regular farmers who are unable to access the extension agent. And thus, for these regular farmers, this limiting access to the extension agent manifests as a barrier. When it comes to actually engaging with the content of the advisory, there are two big enablers. One, the farmers who have applied some of the components of the advisory have realized the benefits of adhering to Akilimo. Right? This also generates social proof and encourages others to know more about the advisory. Second, in the recent years, the approach to cassava farming has shifted from subsistence agriculture to being more business oriented. And this change in the mindset and a new perspective has also encouraged farmers to be more welcoming of advisory services that are meant to optimize their yield. However, we did find instances of farmers only engaging with those components of the advisory that are relatively easy and do not require any calculations. For all the other components of the advisory, we see that farmers tend to default to some of their traditional practices. And this conformity to their inherent knowledge and inherent practices presents itself as a barrier. During the actual application stage of the advisory, we find that community meetings to discuss challenges as well as demonstrations by extension agents and lead farmers are strong enablers. However, not all farmers can enjoy this access to trainings like, like explained via the extension agent, lead farmer, regular farmer model. And thus, sometimes the inability to fully apply the advisory content does remain a barrier for farmers because the lead farmer may not necessarily be the most knowledgeable source of support and information. Additionally, a barrier we see most commonly, and that is not surprising and expected, is limited financial resources to be able to access the inputs in the recommended quantities. Now, based on the enablers and barriers we diagnosed, we conducted design workshops with extension agents and farmers. The ideas from these design workshops led us to three intervention areas. And now let's look at each one of them in more detail. First, we found that farmers are unable to engage with the advisory guide fully, and they tend to only apply the components 
let us straight forward to understand and implement. We thus wanted to explore ways to optimize the guide, balancing information that was easy to understand and apply, while still maintaining the details and technicalities involved in the Akilimo advisory. Thus, the intervention focused on illustrating the components of the guide in an easier step-by-step -step manner. Building on this first area of interventions, we had also found that farmers tended to default to their traditional practices when they did not fully understand the advisory component. And thus, they sought something that was more familiar, more known, and that they thought to be more practiced around them. Moreover, we had also gathered some anecdotal evidence around the importance of recognizing the traditional knowledge of the elder farmers and respecting it. Thus, the second intervention was around adding simple messages into the advisory delivery that pay tribute to the farmer's inherent knowledge, but also balance it out and show the value of Akilimo by saying, newer challenges require newer solutions. And these messages are what we call behavioral primers. For example, a message or a primer around payer effects would read something like, your fellow community members who used to plant without adequate land preparation are now reaping the benefits from having understood and prepared their land according to what Akilimo advises. Or a message or a primer around loss aversion would read something like, it is important to understand how much it will cost you to plow and ridge your farm before starting the process. Without this, you might spend more than you will earn. Take action today to go avoid going into losses. And in this manner, we made a list of what farmers do in the absence of advisory in conjunction with other Akilimo partners. And then we incorporated this via different messages throughout our lab study. Finally, our third intervention area was around the operational model of dissemination. We had insights pointing to the technical inadequacy of the lead farmer, as well as some community farmers not respecting the role of the lead farmer, simply because they perceive this lead farmer to be one of their own, yet receiving extra benefits simply by the virtue of being a lead farmer. Thus, we created a prototype via a storyboard where the lead farmer is actually elected from within the community with the buy-in from majority farmers. And we wanted to understand if the, this change in the process of selecting and appointing a lead farmer would lead to an increased respect towards this lead farmer and therefore a higher likelihood of seeking this person out to learn more about the Akilimo advisory. We tested these interventions via a lab study in September of 2023. I'm now going to present some of our um, important findings of this lab study. We surveyed a total of 634 farmers, of which 65% were male farmers and 35% were female farmers. These farmers were recruited across only seven different Akilimo partners. So it's important to keep in mind that while Akilimo has more than 100 partners, the results from this lab study are based on the recruitment only from seven partners. We have some of the representatives of these partners on our panel today to discuss what it means to implement Akilimo in the field. As a refresher to lab studies, we did not actually roll out these interventions in the field with a traditional baseline endline survey. We conducted a lab in the field, which essentially means that we tested high fidelity prototypes based on the intervention areas I just presented. And then we attempted to measure the feelings and the reactions that the interventions evoked in the respondents. Based on our first intervention area of illustrated advisory steps, the one aspect that showed a big difference between the control and the treatment groups is around the comprehension of yield class. The control group saw a text that read, Higher the yield, lesser the fertilizer. The treatment groups interacted with a designed version of the text, which is the image you see on the right-hand side, accompanied by the same text. We then had a question to check comprehension around this relationship between yield class and fertilizer. We find that the treatment group respondents were 33% more likely to correctly understand this relationship. From the graph on the left, we see that all the treatment group respondents were able to select the correct option out of four options and pick 
the answer which was higher the yield lesser the fertilizer now while this is not a direct decision making step in the akilimo advisory it is important to drive home this comprehension of the inverse relation between yield and fertilizer before attempting to explain cost benefit analysis of if you should even invest in fertilizer building on this first finding even if we can be sure that treatment respondents did understand the relation between yield and fertilizer requirement we found that simply having the knowledge does not imply guaranteed application and this brings us to another component of the akilimo advisory which is the risk profile in the context of our lab study we categorized risk seeking nature to mean for example if akilimo recommends you to not apply fertilizer because you do not need it and you still decide to apply it anyway and you disregard the advisory then we classified that respondent as a risk seeking respondent or the other way around where if akilimo recommended to recommended someone to apply fertilizer and they yet chose not to for various reasons they are still again a risk seeking farmer in short we classified risk seeking behavior as choosing to defy the akilimo advisory and do the opposite very interestingly we had two decision points during the lab game and the risk profile of participants manifested differently in these cases for investment in plowing which is the graph on your right we observe majority of the sample to be adhering to the advisory basically meaning they were risk averse and most farmers chose to follow what akilimo recommended to them however for fertilizer application which is the graph on the left we see majority of the farmers to be defying akilimo advisory and doing the opposite of what is recommended to them for the treatment groups yes we see a lower proportion of farmers who defy the recommendation as compared to the control group but yet as a whole not enough farmers adhere to the recommendation of fertilizer application now in terms of supporting evidence there is previous published literature in nigeria that also shows that farmers tend to apply fertilizer as a way of mitigating against any unforeseen changes without fully understanding the damage it causes to soil fertility in the long run or the impact of overuse of fertilizer on the yield in the short run we can also say that farmers apply fertilizer to minimize the risk of uncertain climate changes but as a whole they still don't follow the advisory that is recommended and best for their farm and this indicates the decision to implement advisory is not simply related to a lack of access or comprehension there is a sticky behavior around fertilizer application and simply understanding the relation between yield and fertilizer via illustrations is not enough to shift this now well I, when i say most of us uh, akilimo advisory in the akilimo advisory there is a component of yield class selection and this is a very crucial step during our core design workshops we had uh, worked with farmers to try and simplify the images of the yield class selection on the top right we present the original yield class as it appears in the akilimo advisory and on the bottom right this is the prototype that we had designed with farmers during the core design and we tested this during the lab study now from the survey results collected during data collection we collected the at the start of the game we had collected the actual field size and the yield from last season thus at the back end for analysis we had the actual yield class calculated by our computer to compare against the selection that the farmers made from the five images during the game very interestingly and sadly we find no difference in the ability to identify once yield class irrespective of whether the respondents engaged with the original guide or a redesigned guide we see that across control and both the treatment groups most farmers have overestimated their yield class now we might assume that regular farmers do not have access to consistent trainings from extension agents there is a lead farmer in the middle thus maybe the inability of regular farmers to identify their yield class is more understandable however we see that most lead farmers have also been unable to correctly identify their yield class 
with only 40 lead farmers having made the correct selection. 40 lead farmers and 78 total farmers who got their yield class correct. When, when you look at the graph on the right, which is the age distribution, when we looked at the 78 respondents who had gotten their yield class correctly, we see no difference in terms of gender or age or belonging to a certain Akilimo partner. We can only assume that these handful of farmers either chose the right image at random or they had already known about it from a prior interaction with an extension agent. Another important finding to highlight here is that during our formative research, we had learned that farmers don't always know about their area of the farm. They may know how much yield they have from the last season because they remember the number of 50 kg sacks of cassava that they harvested. But as for the area of the farm, they often rely on extension agents or other input providers like tractor owners or middlemen selling pesticides and fertilizers to inform the farmers of what is my land size. Our next finding is around the lead farmer selection types. We find that farmers who engaged with a prototype around an elected lead farmer were 15% more likely to make an individual effort as a show of support towards their lead farmer as compared to farmers who engaged with a prototype of an externally appointed lead farmer. On the right hand side, you see an example of an effort task that we administered. Each respondent had to count the number of ones and zeros and there were four such boxes. So it was quite a tedious task. As shown on the graph here, we find that farmers who had an elected lead farmer in the game were more likely to one, complete more number of boxes in, in a fixed time and two, they also had more number of correct answers as compared to the other group who interacted with an externally appointed lead farmer. Additionally, we also find that farmers with an elected lead farmer are 14% more likely to follow Akilimo practices, essentially meaning that they are more likely to proactively seek out and want to learn from an elected farmer as compared to an appointed farmer. Now, before we hear uh, from our esteemed panel about their thoughts on incorporating behavior science into actual implementation, I would like to leave you with four highlights of areas of further exploration based on the findings of this lab study. First is illustrative supplementation. We find that technical advisory when accompanied with illustrative supplementation does lead to better comprehension in parts, if not of the whole guide. And thus it might be worth exploring if during trainings, there is a feasibility of using real time drawings based on the technical advisory. This is important because, for example, a regular farmer who does not have a take-home training aid or a take-home material, the visual component might be recollected better than the extension agent having verbally taught the technical advisory. However, as we have seen from the yield class photos, the original as well as the redesigned illustration, especially around yield classes, is limiting in its value to aid farmers to identify their yield class. And thus, the yield class selection could definitely benefit from a revamped method with inputs from agronomy experts and also designing with farmers themselves so that we hear more from them as to how to make this process simpler so that they can correctly identify their yield class. The second area is around the lead farmer selection. We find that the likelihood of following Akilimo practice when taught by an elected farmer is higher than when taught by an appointed farmer. And also, the effort towards supporting the lead farmer is higher when the farmer is elected. And thus, it might be valuable to explore if it's feasible to secure community buy-in before selecting and appointing a lead farmer. The third area is around normative messaging around fertilizer use. Now, as we remember, the plowing decision tends to be advisory adhering and the fertilizer investment tends to be advisory defined. From a behavioral perspective, this is what we call a sticky behavior. This also links back to the finding on understanding the improved, like understanding the relation between the yield class and the fertilizer. There might be good comprehension for the treatment group, but there is yet a sticky preference.
recommendations. And thus, including some sort of a normative messaging, you know, specifically around fertilizer use behavior might be helpful. And examples of these could be like, do you really need fertilizer? Or your neighbor's farm is different from yours and thus their decisions are different from yours. Or invest wisely to avoid going into losses. Social norms around fertilizer seem to be really strong. Something we have observed in the diagnostic phase as well. When not many farmers have really verified if their farm really needs that much or that little quantity of a fertilizer. Finally, the fourth area of ex exploration is around the behavioral primers on traditional practices. As a refresher, the behavioral primers were various messages that were framed to recognize traditional practices by way of acknowledging and respecting their existence, but also highlighting the importance of embracing newer practices. Unfortunately, we found that our regression analysis was not significant between the control and treatment groups who interacted with these traditional framing messages. But there was a negative correlation between being associated to a treatment group that saw these traditional messages and the likelihood of defaulting to traditional practices in the presence of Akilima. And that makes it worthwhile to see if there is scope to explore this uh, into some sort of trainings. Um, with that, I will pass it back to Teresa to moderate the rest of the panel discussion. Good. Thank you, Shamale, for the excellent presentation and the insights provided. Uh, from my side, just a quick recap. It's really about that technology development, awareness creation about that technology, which requires a massive effort on behavioral drivers. Um, in terms of packaging, in terms of presentation is key for us to look. And today we've seen that though visuals really help, but even as you presented is very key and need input from the end users. In terms of engagement, I think we all know across these countries, farmer extension ratio. And so we need that support in there, but the process of engaging even lead farmers to support is also critical and needs that behavioral driver in terms of the farmer being approved or approving of that extension agent selection or election process. Then finally, it has always been on the agenda in terms of access to finance to be able to integrate or apply whatever technology. So thanks very much, Shamali, for this uh, insightful uh, findings. Now we want to shift to the panel discussions and may I request our four panelists um, to share their video. Uh, this session, we will want to look at the implications of these recommendations and how do we actually implement them. As we already introduced, some of them are partners already implementing. Some are working on behavioral drivers already and some are scaling specialists. So we want to tap your brains a bit and I want to start with EMEC. Um, EMEC, the final slide, yeah? from Shamali really talks about the buy-in of extension agents. Uh, being the managing director, I know you've been in this for a very long time. Uh, we just want you to share your insights. How do you see this whole strategy or this whole recommendation of electing lead farmers being practical? And probably you can go to the extent of sharing your experience as to how you have been engaging lead farmers they're being so effective in your system. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Yemisi. Thank you very much. And good morning um, and good afternoon, everyone. In the webinar. Okay. So uh, for sultry, we, we practice the uh, lead farming uh, method where farmers have a lead farmer that relates with the extension agents. Uh, before the Akilimo uh, program, we have uh, we have a very extensive uh, um, agrograss program. We started with about 17, and we presently have about 10,000 farmers in different groups, over 54 villages around our factory area. So we've always had um, 
this method, this structure, so it was easy to adopt the Akilimo, Akilimo uh, project into the existing structure that we have. And um, what we do, basically, we, we had tried the method of farmers electing a uh, lead farmer uh, in the past, the Akilimo project, and we found out that it didn't work. Yeah, we pick um, lead farmers, uh, the farmers, the, the group survive more, the group perform more or better than when the farmers pick um, a lead farmer or nominate lead farmer by themselves. Because what we find is that the farmers nominate based on relationship, family, compound, loyalty to friend and brother, and all those sentiments is what they use in picking. And the individual might not be able to say no, and then he accept, and he simply does not have the flair to be able to do the job does not even have deep interest in the project or deep interest in farming. In fact, himself is struggling with his farm. So how will he be able to supervise the farms of the other people? Uh, so we, we practiced that in many years ago. And then when we now try the, the first run of sultry, helping them to pick, uh, we found out that almost all the groups had fantastic yield, good relationship. And what we do basically is we have parameters that we use in picking these farms. We have um we use their farm, how their farm, how they actually coordinate their own farm, and how many if if the farmers have attended all our training sessions, especially the TOT sessions, are the far are these farmers passionate? Are they people loving? Do they have the time? Do they have the, the interest? to lead and then all their leadership skills. So what we do is to pick and then we ratify with the village because all our groups are in different villages. We ratify this with the village head and then bring it to the group. And most times, uh, most about 95% of the time, uh, the very choice of uh, the very people that we have picked as lead farmers are usually the pick of the farmers themselves. When we, we go, normally we are transparent to tell them how we came about picking this particular farmer as their lead farmer. And we have found out that that has helped us. So we now translated this into the Akilimino project. When the Akilimino project came, we also did this. We used the same method to pick the lead farmers. And we have seen that, I mean, the absorption of the program has been 100% because the lead farmers themselves are good examples are using their kilimo on their on their own farm. Are using it. They're able to use it for their own group. They have good farms that is admirable by all the other farmers, good leaders. And so we've been able to see that the use of uh, lead farmers in the Akilimo project have helped farmers to maintain their farm, their weed management system. They've been able to abide the fertilizer program. They've been able to use the program to also monitor their yield. And we've seen a lot of progress, especially in the yield and the performance of the farmers. Thank you so much, Amy, for that insightful um, um, thought from, from Salfi. So what I'm thinking here is really not just about electing, but probably being transparent, developing a transparent strategy or system together with the farmers, developing that criteria so that at the end, farmers all agree to that, whether it's elected or whether it's appointed. Um, probably I'll quickly shift to uh, something, but before then, uh, Shamale, I think we have a couple of questions in the Q&A. Maybe you can have a quick look at them, else we can as well take them during the Q&A session. So something quickly from your side, I think one of the areas to further explore is having this normative messaging around um, fertilizer messaging. Just to tap your brains a bit, how is Notori currently doing that, integrating all these behavioral drivers into uh, their strategies for marketing fertilizer? Any thoughts on that? Okay, thank you, Teresa. Um, so um, for us at Notori, uh, what we have been doing is um, um, trying to incorporate um, um, insights, behavioral insights specifically into into our um, 
communications to farmers in two ways. Um, the, the first one is, um, of course, we we um, design, uh, we develop and design communication packages that will guide farmers um, to know some critical uh, um, information, especially related to fertilizer use on their farms. Um, and we put this in, uh, in, in communication materials, for example, like um, video materials, which can be uh, played back at uh, video viewing sessions. Or we even get the um, the village promoters who are our extension agents, local extension agents, uh, resident in the rural communities to practically demonstrate this to the farmers on learning centers that we call demonstration farms. So basically we design um, some communication around a, a, a package of um, knowledge that takes into, into consideration some very critical things, especially knowing the fact that farmers tend to be very influenced by traditional behavior. So we look at, for example, history of land use. We try to get information, I mean, from the, uh, from the uh, farmers to know how long, for example, they have been cultivating the land, the kind of crops that they are growing, what management practices they are adopting. Um, then to also find out uh, yield trends in recent times, maybe in the last two, three seasons, have their yields been increasing or decreasing? Then we also uh, combine this with knowledge of um, critical um, anomalies that might be um, uh, uh, um, existing in the soils around them. So we use basically soil maps, the, the, the soil maps that are available for the country or for their location to look at areas that have acidity or areas that the soils are saline or, or there's the tendency for sodic soils and all of these other things that could be anomalies within the soil. And we now combine this with um, the agronomic recommendations for fertilization for the respective crops that the farmers in question want to cultivate. Now, putting this together helps us to now develop some critical um, information that we pass across to them, like I mentioned, through these videos and um, on the demonstration plots. So we, we come with messages, for example, that encourage you to apply fertilizer, not directly on the soil surface, but um, making small holes that you put in your fertilizer. Then we encourage them to also ensure that they apply uh, using designated measures. So we relate this to things that are very common in the environment. For example, we can tell you to use a bottle crown cover, a match box to, to, to measure the quantity of the fertilizer based on pretested um, 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 knowledge of what these uh, uh, measures will give in terms of quantity relative to what the recommendation is. And then we also encourage them to uh, um, cover the, the, the holes after application such that the fertilizer that is applied is not washed away by erosion and all of those things. So we, de we design all of this into simple pack packages that can be communicated through a video. We showed the, the video practically demonstrating this. We also get the farmers to do this with them in their communities, in small groups of 20 to 25 farmers in their small cooperatives. So these are some of the ways that we have used um, normative messaging in the past. And we have seen that um, it, it yields some results, though there, there will be concerns around, um, in a lot of cases, affordability and availability of these fertilizers. However, one thing that we have also tried to do in the case of Noturi is to ensure that this uh, village promoters who are our local extension agents also double as um, retail points that are able to reach the last mile farmers in their respective communities so that they can get direct access to these fertilizers. Good. So that's our experience so basically much. at the moment. Yes. Yeah. Thanks so much, Thompson, for that um, insight from Notori as well. If I can quickly shift to better and then so that we can have some time at the end uh, to have discussions with our with our audience. So um, better, yes, being um, a human or user experience and human-centered expert, right? We look at one of the key things that came out as a finding was basically uh, farmers being sticky, having this stickiness around fertilizer use. Um, um, what, what kind of design, human-centered design or approach would you actually recommend yeah, to enhance uh, such a situation? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for the question. And thank you, Shalmani, for, for the presentation. 
So for those that non, don't know about it, human centered design is about understanding what is the context of, of the users of the innovation and which real problems they are facing. So we can develop intervention that address those problems in the specific context of the users. Uh, now here, human-centered design can play a very crucial role because it helps to understand which are those factors that are influencing and conditioning this resistance to apply the provided advice. So one example of a factor that could be influencing farmers is the social and cultural norms. So using explanatory methodologies, such as direct observation and interviews, human-centered design can help to understand which norms are those and also which ones are influencing which specific farmer groups. Because it can also be that females are affected by different norms than males. Um, and also human-centered design then can help to ideate and prototype different ways of overcoming those norms and test them further with users in their context. So with farmers, right? We will, and uh, this will help to assess the efficiency and then uh, how actually these um, solutions can address those norms that are like um, making that farmers are not applying the provided advice. Uh, so this, this process is highly iterative and it relies in constant uh, conversation with users, in this case, the farmers. And uh, through this, uh, we can maybe reach uh, the final goal of, of shifting this decision-making in farmers. Excellent. Thanks so much for those, um, um, should I say, a quick education on human-centered and what those conditions are to consider. So finally, let's hear from uh, Thompson Ogunsami. Um, Thompson, I hope you are online, yeah. Uh, one of the other things that came out of the finding was really limited access to finance, right? I hope Thompson is there and we can yes. see you to have a conversation. Yeah. Y yes, I, I think on, on this, uh, to, to, to comprehensively address the, the challenge that may be faced by pharma in terms of uh, maybe assessing fund for purchasing input or transportation and all that, the, the major thing is to bundle uh, the, 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 to bundle the whole of this into the use of Aquilemo services and products by pharma. And uh, this bundling approach ensures that pharma are not only having access to financial resources, but also receive necessary agronomy uh, advice, advisory that are needed to support them to be able to optimize input use and to also improve their practices. Because most of the time they could have the money and uh, might not be able to use the exact practices uh, as uh, uh, as included in the Akilimo package, and that could affect them. In terms of finance, there could be possibility for loans and credit facility for them to purchase, and there could be also insurance products, and they are, they, all this can be bundled together with certified seed, fertilizer, agrochemicals, and to also package this into market. Currently, this is part of what uh, Sotri is doing and many other partners in Nigeria, looking into the fact that there is need for them to have access to market and other things. Then the use of the knowledge becomes more versatile when everything is put together. And a lot of organizations can be involved in this, uh, like Notori can bring in their fertilizer package, Saru can bring in the agrochemicals and other ones, then everything is put together to be able to help. So generally, by bundling the use of Akilimo into those required services and products, farmer can benefit from a sort of holistic approach to agricultural development from their side, and the use of Akilimo will even be more integrated into what they are doing. It's not going to be about the money alone, but that will help them to address those immediate challenges and be able to foster on a long-term resilience and also to have sustainability in terms of the use. Good. Thanks so much, our expert of uh, panelists, for your insight. Um, I believe we all got something out of the discussions. For me, basically, it's about, yes, we need the lead farmers, but being able to have a consensus, that agreement with the actual farmers really goes a long way in accepting those lead farmers in their position. Um, if we look at the human-centered or uh, user experience bit of it, 
Again, it comes back together with the notary issue of, yes, we pay attention to those traditional practices. And better also said, yes, we need to consider those norms. So it's not as perfect as a technology may be, but again, making sure that all these categories, aspects of behavioral drivers are considered in development and also in the dissemination. Then finally, no matter how good we consider all of them, we still need access to that finance. And therefore it is critical to make sure that we bundle this together with our technologies, with all the behavioral issues to make your application is possible. Um, we will open up now to our audience for Q&A session. Uh, my colleague Barbara will help us to run through this. Um, I think we initially had some questions on the Q&A session about the presentation. I checked, it looks like we are good, everything has been answered, but um, audience, please, you can go and check the responses. If not, and you want to follow up, you can quickly do that. Barbara, I will turn to you. I think Grace had raised the hand initially, if we can omit her to, to get back to us with her question. And please, I will encourage you, if the question is to a specific panelist or our presenter, you can please indicate that to make it easier for them to respond. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Teresa. I think Grace put a comment in the Q&A. She would like to follow up after this. She wants, she's interested in training. Um, okay. So she's given yeah. us the details, but we've got Murat on the line and his, num his, his hand is up. Oh, yeah. so Murat, okay. I've given you permission to talk. Please go ahead. Good. Thank Murat. you very much. Good. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for the session and, uh, and presentation, Shalmali, and also your responses. Already gave, you know, what you say is very interesting because what I understood from uh, your presentation and earlier responses, the, the bottleneck are more social norms than the solution itself. So if you can extend that argument, that means that actually independent of, you know, the design of the Akilimo or it is, uh, you know, how good it looks as a technology, we have very limited capability to change farmer behavior. So what I want to ask is, is if that is really the case, should we continue focusing on the, how Akilimo is designed, it's human centered design, all the other things, or should we really try to identify other solutions that would address the behavioral norms and complement Akilimo with this? What you say is very interesting and it, it is, I'm, uh, I'm working on the scaling and especially social innovations is also very interesting to see that maybe the answer is not really about Akilimo, it's about out, uh, it's something else out there. What do you think? Over. Hey, hey uh, thanks for your question. Uh, I would say it is not entirely about social norms because our formative research had a lot of anecdotal evidence around you know, some sort of pride being associated with being an Akilimo farmer or a general sense of enthusiasm to attending a training by an extension agent. So again, the point to come back to here is that the way in which information is being presented and disseminated, if there are some sort of hassle factors in the way that engagement is, that is when farmers tend to default to what they know and what is familiar. But however, if we are to make an effort towards uh, making that technical dissemination a bit more simpler and you know keeping in mind the end user then it is not entirely about social norms because then you are also targeting the capacity of the user to be able to effectively engage with the advisory and the social norms bit is highly relevant especially for the sticky behavior around fertilizer where uh, you know no amount of whether you comprehend the advisory or not plays a decision into what you eventually decide to do because you are governed a lot with what you are seeing around you in terms of your neighbor or in terms of your village chief, for example. So I think there are specific components that are, you know, victims of sticky behavior. And then for the others, there is definitely scope um, to redesign it with a human-centered approach so as to make the engagement more seamless and increase the end user's capacity to effectively understand, engage, and implement the content. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Shomale. I think we have a couple of um, 
audience who will want to come in. So if we can quickly keep our responses short. Um, can we please move to Yusuf, please? Um, Barbara, you can please unmute. Yes, I'm giving Yusuf and Wanjiku permission to speak. So please go ahead, Tim. Exactly. Yusuf. So please, Yusuf first, then followed by Wanjiku. Hello, Yusuf. In case you are talking, we are, we can't hear you here. Maybe in the interest of time, we move to Wanjiku and probably you check your system and then you can come back after Wanjiku. Yes, Wanjiku, please go ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. Could you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you, team, uh, for a very insightful presentation. I had one question on the uptake of uh, recommendations. So there was one slide that suggested that um, the uptake on recommendations to plow were taken up very well by all the control and the treatment groups, whereas the fertilizer recommendations were like, you know, in the same way, not taken up by both the control and the treatment groups. Is there anything, would there be any specific reason why say plowing um, recommendation was taken up and fertilizer was not taken up? For example, I'm wondering whether there are what are the costs associated to with plowing as, as compared to costs associated to fertilizer application? Would that be a reason that um, gives us these kinds of outcomes? Thank you. Great question. Um, during the game, we actually had, uh, uh, we had uh, sort of pre-programmed acre and hectare wise plowing as well as ridging rates. So when the farmer was asked to make a decision around this is your plowing cost and if you plow your yield will increase by these men this much per acre and with the current rate of cassava roots this is how much you would get the farmer was able to see the cost and benefit both for fertilizer and for plowing so um the like being able to see the cost uh was probably not a reason why we see uh different decisions in plowing and fertilizer Excellent. Thank you so much for that um, response. Uh, can we quickly turn to the q and I think we have one question there, probably also to Shamali. How would the transition from the simpler diagram initially introduced to the more complex one shown during the presentation be managed to avoid confusion among farmers? Should these diagrams be combined to ensure clarity for farmers? So I think it's also going back to where you have those diagrams exactly. If you can please quick give a quick response to that. Yeah. Um, I think uh, as we saw from our results, we did not see any difference between farmers who interacted with the old diagram and the new diagram. Like it did not have an effect in being able to um, accurately predict their yield class. And I guess then this is a question to be deferred back to the agronomy experts to see um, how could we incorporate more farmers into redesigning this so that we have their buy-in and they find it easier if it's designed with them. Okay, good. Um, maybe we turn back to Hans. I don't see anything in the Q&A. Again, Yusuf, are you ready? Okay. Yes. Good morning. Sorry for the other time. My earpiece was That's much okay. from then. I hope yeah. you can hear me now. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, my question is, I want to talk on uh, good agronomy practices. So how can Aklimo make it simpler? I mean, simple for those local farmers in order to have the access to the those applications that we are using on the phone. How can we... Uh, Break it as in make it easy for the farmer so that I mean I want to change to change the the face of the application. Thank you. Okay, good. I guess um Shamala, you can give a try, then maybe better can also come in. I'm looking, I'm hearing more of the how. Yeah, so maybe the demand-centered aspect and also what you saw on the field. So a quick response and then maybe better can come in. Um okay. I guess it's I guess it's a mix of everything, right? I mean, just uh, working on the human-centered aspect won't take care of the dissemination or the operational design. Like, it needs to go a bit uh, hand in hand, right? In terms of, uh, we may put in the effort to revamp something, but uh, via the operational model, our regular farmers seeking out their lead farmers effectively to actually engage with the content. 
um so it's a balancing act it's both it's not just one around working on one side i will definitely defer to uh, berta and thompson to come in on uh, redesigning the best practices and thompson to give us a feedback on the operational design yes thank you so much um thompson maybe a quick yes, one thank you very much yeah, yeah th thank you very much i think in terms of the question particularly in relation to the, 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 the type of package that will easily be used by farmers. Currently, what we have, the, the, the Akilimo app you have mentioned is not made for farmers, it's made for extension agents. We also have Akilimo paper-based tools, which farmers are conversant with. So what has happened generally, Akilimo, we have a suite of tools. We have a lot of, it's just like a toolbox, whereby you pick what is fitting for who. So at the moment, Farman has specific tool that can work for them. And what we have observed so far is basically they are much more conversant with the paper-based version, Why the use of a, also IVR is also much more common with farmers because they can hear the response in different local language uh, directly. So it means it's, it's, it's the extension agent that are working closely with them to backstop more with what they know in order to be able to simplify the process with them. But for Akilimo app, the farmers cannot use it. Currently in Nigeria, we have less than 10% of our public population who can effectively use Akilimo app. Good. Thank you so much, Thompson, for your feedback and response as well. I would have wished we get something from Beta as well as a human-centered expert. Uh, we have only two minutes. So I will suggest better if you can go just 30 seconds, that would be brilliant. Then we can close the session. For those of us who still have questions, please, I'm so sorry, we still have the Q&A session open. Kindly type in all the questions that will make sure we respond to all of them and they will be part of the report at the end. Better. Yeah, I think Akilimo, one of the nicest things it has is that this, it packs the, the advice in very different ways and using different channels, right? And those are highly context dependent. So you would need to understand what is the context of your user. Some of them are fine with SMS, other prefer face-to-face -face interactions. So yeah, you need to understand that in order to, to pack the, the, the content and also to use the social networks they have, right? Like if, if they are user ready to this figure of the lead farmer is fine, but if you're introducing something new, you need to understand how they feel about it. Excellent. So um, we are on top of the hour and I want to say a big thank you to our expert of uh, panelists for being with us, sharing your insight. Thank you to all the participants being with us for the one hour. We, we had over 100 participants, the questions, the insights, we are very grateful. We are so 